All right. Okay, great. Welcome. This is Donna Ashton with the Waldorf Connection and welcome to Tea with Donna. This is just an informal chat. You know, I have my tea <laughs> and I have my notes <laughs> and this is just an informal chat to um, just talk to you, you know, for maybe 15, 20 minutes and um, I'll take your questions and just kind of connect with you guys in an informal way. Like I said, I have some notes to kind of go over, but we can certainly go in a different direction if somebody has a question. So there's a chat box. So if you do have a question, you can go ahead and put it in there and I can either answer it in the chat box or I can unmute you and we can actually have a conversation if you're live with us. If you're watching this on the replay and you have a question, um, I'll probably post this like in our Facebook group or something so you can pop on over there and just, um, you know, put a question underneath the where I have it in Facebook and I'll answer the questions over there. So let's kind of move forward as we're working on talking about first grade readiness. So this is a big topic and you might be kind of Oh my gosh, first grade is coming up. So whether you're getting ready to start first grade in the upcoming fall, if you're in North America, or um, maybe if you're in the Southern Hemisphere, you know, you've got, you're just starting or recently started, or maybe, you know, you're kind of thinking about getting started for the following. Um, I think you guys start in like January, February. Um, regardless, um, we're going to talk about your first graders development kind of readiness signs, what they're going through. I can't get through everything because I have a whole big, like eight pages here. I know I'll never get through it all, but we're going to try to get through some stuff. We're going to talk about our school day flow, um, some things for you to get ready for, because we're not only talking about first grade readiness for your child, kind of like signs that they're ready to move into first grade, but also for you, because this is like the beginning of the official grades for Waldorf. So if you've been, you know, doing kindergarten and preschool and now you're like moving up into first grade, it might feel a little scary or overwhelming. I know that's how I felt. I had already been doing it for several years, but it felt like now it counts or something. I don't know. Or maybe if you're new, you've maybe pulled your child out of a school or, or you know, done a different type of homeschooling and you're moving into Waldorf. Whatever the reason, we're going to talk about some basic things to get ready. Um, I've got a materials list, main lesson blocks. I can't get all through all this main lesson flow. I'll try really hard, <laughs> but I do have some really awesome resources for you at the end. And I put together an amazing first grade package. I literally sat down and I, I will tell you, I literally sat down here the other day and I went through every first grade, um, thing I could find in my computer and I compiled them all into this really special uh, first grade package. So we'll talk about that coming up, but let's just kind of go through development. And um, ideally your child should be somewhere close to that six and a half years of age or seven years of age when they're starting first grade. Um, a child that has lived for seven spring seasons and will be seven for most of the first grade is ideal. So I know there's some flexibility here and it can't always work out exactly right, but for the most part, if you can try to do that. Um, we had a friend who has twin girls who are like three days younger than my girls. So they have October birthday and we started school when they are first grade when they were you know just about turning seven like they turned seven in october of their first grade year so they were seven for most of the year and these girls had been schooled previously and um were a little bit ahead academically and so she decided to go ahead and put them like in a grade above and they struggled and they didn't connect with the material and she ended up moving them back. So I don't know if that helps in whatever ways. And we can certainly talk about that if you are um, not sure if you should start first grade yet. I, that's you know a, a big consideration. And I believe me, I went through it myself because I was like, do we need to do another whole year of kindergarten? 
what should I do here? And looking back, I'm so glad I did because my girls were so ready. And even one of mine was not even really coming along in first grade until about halfway through. And it was all about the teeth. And I'll talk about that in a few minutes. So if I had done it the year before, they would have never been even close to ready for first grade, but it went very smooth. They, it just seems like it was too easy almost. I know that sounds weird, but they were so ready for it that it just worked very nicely. There was no pressure and they really learned how to read very easily and started writing and it just went very smooth. So here are a few Waldorf guidelines to look for when you're like, okay, what are the other signs? Like there's these other kind of readiness signs. And one of the first ones is all about the loss of the baby teeth, like the milk teeth. Um, this says more than two. So um, this is kind of where I was with it. My one child, my one girl had lost like four or five teeth and the other one had only lost one or two, I think at the time. And just, she just wasn't quite ready. And it's so odd because she recently just lost her last two baby teeth. Um, she's not here, but I don't know why I'm whispering, but <laughs> she's 15 and a half and just lost her last two baby teeth like within the last few months. So she was really hanging on to those child, those baby teeth. Anyway, so it, not just one or two, but like all of a sudden they all start to come out at once. I don't know if you've experienced this, if you have older children, but it just seems like left and right, they come out like right together. Those first maybe eight teeth come out and uh, that's what we're talking about here. Okay, so the other, one of the other indications is can reach their arm over their head and touch their opposite ear. This means that their limbs have grown. So we're talking like this. <laughs> If their hand is way up here and they can't get close to their ear, they haven't grown into their limbs yet. And there's a whole, um, Steiner has these whole indications and I don't have time to go through, you know, the first, the seven year cycles, but the zero to seven is the early age, the early phase of childhood Steiner indicates the child is learning and growing into their body and your child needs to finish this part of their growth before moving into working on their brain, you know, their head and their academics. They need to learn to, to they have to grow into their limbs and, and have that almost like planted on the ground first. Uh, some of the other things are they can hop on one foot, they can jump rope, they can close one eye and then the other, they can repeat a clapping rhythm, and there's, there's a whole long list. And they can concentrate for long periods of time. I mean, it's not like you're gonna be sitting and doing school for four hours, but they need to sit be able to sit for 45 minutes or so and really concentrate on what you're telling them and you know listen to the stories and if they're just not interested in that then they may not be ready and the beauty of homeschooling ladies and gentlemen if your dads if you're out there is that you don't have to start in September and go like a regular school year and I know I'm just sort of saying that as a blanket statement and obviously you have to follow your local register you know regulations and your state I know certain states are more regulated and, and, and require certain things, but that doesn't mean that you can't go a little slower, even if you do have to get started and, and really take it slow on the material and maybe, you know, not introduce the letters yet, you know, work on more of the nature stories for first grade and the, the festivals and music and something, and then bring in the stories a little bit later. And that's the beauty of homeschooling. You can speed up and slow down based on where your child is. And you can start first grade in January, you know, if you want to. There's nothing that says it has to run September through May or whatever. Um, that's the beauty of homeschooling. If they're not quite ready, if they have a really um, early birthday and you're not really sure what to do, you know, you could kind of do a kindergarten year and then start in January or the fall or the spring if they're ready and see then and then and go. And we'll talk a little bit more about how that flows into second grade in a few minutes. So in the child's development, you are really crossing over the rainbow bridge, as some like to say. It's a time of moving into a different level of consciousness as the etheric body begins to move into the second cycle of life. Like they're moving from that zero to seven, and they're crossing over now into the seven to 14. And it's not like it happens overnight. You know, there's, it's a gradual um, process and the veil is lifting and your child is sort of looking around with eyes in a different way. 
So memory awakens around this time. I know you can probably think back in your own life. I mean, you, you may have a few, you know, some memories of when you're younger than seven, but the majority of what you remember starts after that time. First grade is a time to bring academics to your child, but it is also a big extension of kindergarten. I don't want you to think like, oh, okay, now we're ready to just dig in and get to work. It's, it's really not like that. It's when I, when I was experiencing it, I thought, wow, this is so much like kindergarten, only there's just a little bit more that we do. And that's really the way it is. The material is brought gently using main lesson blocks, and it's done in those blocks to give time for your child to absorb the material. Play and outdoor activity are very big parts still of the first graders day. The majority of their time they should still be playing. And if you're doing school for an hour a day, that's plenty. So keep the joy of being a child in the forefront of your school this year. You can add in some more practical work for them like setting the table, making their beds, folding towels. They have, you know, they have the ability to do a little bit more as they're growing older and bring in you know, gardening, do some chores and baking and things around the house. So, um, all right. The next thing I'm going to kind of, kind of go quickly here is, um, your school day flow. So what does a school day look like? And, um, I have this all, <laughs> I wish I could give these to you, but they are going to be included. This is from my first grade boot camp that I did, uh, like two years ago. And this really kind of outlines everything from, um, from first grade. And there, I have some templates and things in here. But basically, you get up in the morning. This was sort of our typical day. We would get up in the morning and have our morning routine, which was to get dressed and make the beds, have breakfast. I might throw in a load of laundry. And then we would take our mid-morning walk. That was the bridge for us from, you know, just kind of hanging around the house, playing, <laughs> And then the walk was the transition into school. So we would, you know, eat breakfast and then go right on our walk, take about a 20 minute walk or whatever, and then come back and go right into circle time and then right into main lesson. So we would have our circle time. We would come into our school room that we had in the living room where we could move around. And then we would come into our school room where I had a big table um, with some benches and chairs and they would do main lesson for you know depending but maybe it was 20 minutes Maybe it was 40 minutes depending on what we were doing Then we would have lunch around midday and clean up the dishes and then the kids were free to go play I would do some work then in the mid-afternoon. We would always come back together either for a story time, you know, not school related, but maybe I was reading a book or story to them um, we would do hand hand work um, knitting is in first grade and we started that in the winter of first grade or we would do some kind of craft or we would just kind of come together for an activity and then late afternoon we might have music practice if they were you know doing their instruments a blowing instrument my girls were also playing um, cello and violin in first grade I don't think my one daughter was playing violin yet but my other one was and then it's meal prep dinner and um, and then you know on to the evening so it doesn't have to, you know, school is a tiny part of the day still, and even up through fourth grade, really. Uh, it's just a small part, and if you could do it in the morning, great. If you have different, you know, things going on in your family and you have to do it in the afternoons or whatever, this was just our day, and this was just my sample of the way it flowed for me. But everyone's looks different because everyone's family is different, and you just have to go with what works in your family. Um, all right, so let's talk about, we talked about some um, things to look for in your child and you know if they're ready. And if you think they're ready, like I said, and they're not quite ready, then you can just pull back a little bit. That's the beauty. So for you as a mom, what do you have to do to get ready? So, well, I think you need to um, read through the basic outline of the lesson blocks. Like you need to know what's coming. Like what am I going to be teaching for first grade? And I've got a list of these lesson blocks here. Um, and then once you're like, okay, fairy tales for first grade and nature stories, and we're gonna be doing some math and we're gonna be doing some whatever, look through and see what's coming. And then I suggest reading four to five stories from each block to get the flavor of what you'll be teaching. And what I mean by that, it's interesting because each year has its own little, um, what am I trying to say? Sort of the underlying 
behind the scenes, what you're trying to bring to the child. I mean, Rudolf Steiner was amazing in that he created this curriculum to, to meet your child where they are developmentally. So for first grade, this year of being seven is fairy tales. And there's reasons behind it that I don't have time to go into. And each year, the stories change and like the meat of what's coming to your child through these stories prepares them, helps them transition with what they're going through developmentally, meets them with what they need at that time. So fairy tales is first grade. And once you read four or five stories, don't get afraid. <laughs> Some of these fairy tales can be on the morbid side and a little bit uh, violent, but um, you can find a lot about that online. Um, your child does not necessarily see the same things that we see when we read or feel and hear the same things that we hear and, and think about. You know, they haven't been exposed to um, the world, you know, and all of its um, maybe darkness and whatever. And so they are only conjuring in their mind what they can. And they don't, they don't take it the way we do. When I started reading some of these fairy tales, I was like, every single one of these stories is like the parents are so poor they can't feed their children so they send them out into the woods to just fend for themselves like i just felt horrible or the stepmom just hates the new children and just wants to kill them or something and i'm just like what kind of message is that but um they do need this and and the experience that i had was i was reading the kind of um less violent ones for a long time and my kids got really bored and so when it turned out um, toward the spring of the first grade year they were kind of rolling their eyes so I really pulled out the Grimm's fairy tale book that we have and just went for the meat of it but I knew they were ready at that point okay so read stories from the blocks get a flavor of what you'll be teaching do a run-through of circle time so if you've planned out a circle time or if you have a curriculum that you've bought so maybe you've purchased one of the Waldorf inspired curriculums that's out there in the market um, and they have a circle time I know ours my, the Waldorf connection does have a done for you circle time but you still need to be aware of you know know the songs and kind of see how it's going to go I had a little notebook and I used it sort of as a little cheat sheet and I would just kind of turn the page we had a poem that we would do and I included a lot of this in the um, in the one that you get from the Waldorf connection grade one curriculum it has the poems and it has things and so I didn't memorize every single thing but I had it right there I could kind of glance on it and once we did it for a few weeks then I had it but I want you to be familiar with the way it's supposed to run and know what you're doing so that you're not tripping over yourself and you know you want it to flow as much as you can when you're doing it with your child um, practice drawing with block crayons and chalk if you've never done this before you have to get ready to, to do the chalkboard drawings. And you don't have to be an artist. <laughs> you don't have to be, you know, any special Van Gogh here. We're just, um, just know how to use the black crayons and know how to use the chalk because the chalk is different than the black crayons. And, you know, do a few drawings and see how the chalk goes on the board and um, practice with the black crayons. Do a couple fairy tale drawings. In our curriculum, I do have the, a picture for every story so you can mimic it and say, okay, here's what this could look like. You don't have to do it, but I try to give up something because I remember us doing first grade and I was like, what am I supposed to draw from this day? <laughs> and it was like, just you had to pull something from your head and I'm not real good with that. So practice mixing your paints and practice the wet on wet technique. So if you've got between now and August or September, you've got time to start doing some of the arts and getting familiar with how the paint goes. And you'll, if you've never done it before, then you can say, okay, it's running all over the place. It's too watery. I mean, like if you've never done the wet on wet painting technique, you need a little practice. So if you've already been doing some of this with your you know, preschooler and kindergartners, then you, know, you can kind of skip these steps if you already know this part. Um, get familiar with the instrument you'll be using. If you're going to get a recorder or one of those flutes, you know, again, familiarize yourself a little bit. You don't have to be a master at any of these. You just have to be a little bit ahead of your seven-year-old <laughs> so that you can teach them. Um, I suggest some kind of a three-ring binder or planner. Um, something you can keep. I had, you know, a curriculum that I used, but then I also had my planner because I just 
made up a planner and said, okay, I pulled and already had the weeks planned out. And I just, it was too hard to look through the whole book and do it. And so I had my own planner and then I could make notes. We finished this or we didn't finish this or we have to go back or I added my own little projects in, you know, with a story. I added some crafts, whatever. So that way you can keep it for your records. If you're record keeping for your state or whatever you have to turn in at the end of the year, you'll have it all right there. And I like to do a halfway check-in. Like at the holidays, if you do start in September, um, if you're starting in the Southern Hemisphere, it might be like the summertime here, <laughs> where you just go halfway. How are you? Like if you look at your lessons, did you get halfway through? Are you behind? Do you need to speed up? Are you um, not gonna make it through everything? Are you ahead? Like, and just make some notes as to how things go because you'll be really surprised how much you forget if you try to do it at the end of the year and you have to turn in something. So try to keep that going, at least make a halfway point. And I always kept it not so much for regulations, but just for my own, you know, you know keeping up with my child. Like eat, I had two totally different children, even though they were twins. So I would say her strengths are this and we need to practice a little more on that. And the same, you know, with the, with the other one. So it just helped me to know what I needed to work on a little bit more in the second half of the year. Check your legal requirements in your area. Of course, hopefully you've already done this, but if you haven't, it depends on which state you reside in. Every state has totally different homeschooling laws in the U.S. It's odd, but that's the way it is. <laughs> and if you're in a different country, check with your local, you know, region or your locale and see what the rules are because there, there's not just a blanket rule. You know, everything's different. So check and see, um, you can use the HSLDA, the Homeschool, gosh, I can't, Legal Defense Association, I can't, hslda.org. Um, and that will give you a lot of um, links to all the states. And I think it also has countries, the different countries you can click on. So it'll tell you what your latest things are. Um, okay. Um, a materials list, we can go through this quickly, of what you need for first grade. Um, a desk or a table or a place that you need to sit, right, to do the work. Your child's chair needs to be the correct height for them so that their feet are flat on the floor. So they're not gonna be sitting in an adult chair. And this is really important because the, when they're learning to write, they have to be in the correct posture. So if you only have big chairs, See if you can get them one. We got those little, um, well, we had stools, and then I had those from Ikea. They have like the mini office chair that raises up and down, which was nice because then as my, you know, as they grew, we just raised it up and we didn't have to keep buying new chairs. So something like that could be really nice and pretty inexpensive at, at Ikea. I don't, I really don't remember how much they were, maybe $20, $30, but this was years ago, so I don't know. Um, a chalkboard, now um, that can be hung on the wall, um, it could be movable, you know, get a decent size. We have two over here that are like two by three foot, so they're pretty good size. You know, it doesn't have to be one of those humongous ones, but I have seen some people have those really big ones that kind of roll in and out. But something big enough that you can kind of present, you know, you don't want to use those real tiny ones. Um, we did have the little tiny ones for the kids to practice letters and things, almost like a little slate, if you understand what that is. <laughs> and we have those little mini ones that we got for them. But this is for you to draw the pictures of the main lesson and everything and to use the board. Then you've got to have chalk. There's special chalk you could get. The, the Mercurius chalk is nice. And Prang, I think you can get that on Amazon, P-R-A-N-G, Prang. You need a candle for circle time, and we love to use those beeswax natural candles because they're great. You can make your own candles for um, Candlemas in February and then make a special one if you want to do for circle time. You need a main lesson book. We used artist pads from like Hobby Lobby or AC Moore, and those big ones get a thicker weight so that, you know, it's not like real thin paper, but it's that artist pad. And then they were like $8 and it lasted the whole year and they were, you know, just thick. I only wanted one lesson book, but if you want individual ones, some people do one for math, one for writing, one for science or whatever, you can do it that way. It's up to you. You need your block crayons in red, blue, and yellow and stick crayons. 
Um, a coloring pad is really nice to have. You can make your own. There's a tutorial on my website. You basically just need newspaper and brown bags and tape, and you can make your own coloring pad, which is really fun craft to do. Everybody sit down and do, and then they can color their own coloring pad, and that's what they can you know use to color and, and use their um, paintings or whatever. Um, the Stockmar paint, red, blue, and yellow, a one-inch natural brush, and some heavy painting paper, 90 to 120 pounds. You've got to get the thicker painting paper or it'll just get a hole in it. Um, a paint board. We used to have all that stuff in here. I'm sorry, I've cleared everything out of here since we're not homeschooling anymore. <laughs> a paint board is like a big white board that you put your, um, you know, the, the paper on so you can paint, you can get them. I think they're pretty inexpensive too, maybe around eight or ten dollars. Or you could make something um, and some handwork supplies. If you're planning to knit, you need knitting needles, size six and a half to seven, some wool yarn. Start with a little thicker yarn. It's easier for little fingers to work with. Um, a recorder or a flute. And homeschool notebook planner for you to keep organized. Beeswax for modeling and projects. Um, and don't forget, this was a huge <laughs> thing I did at the beginning. A set for the most of the above for yourself. Like I bought two of everything for my kids. And then when we went to get started, I was like, oh. <laughs> I don't have mine and I have to model this for you. So I had to quick order and borrow theirs. Again, I never thought, I just was thinking I needed two, you know, one for each girl. And then I didn't think about one for myself because I'm going to be the teacher doing, I need my own main lesson book and I need my own crayons and everything. And I need my own knitting needles and flute and all of that. If you're going to be practicing and showing. All right, so the main lesson blocks for first grade are nature stories and form drawing, language arts, the consonants, math, the quality of numbers, language arts, again, the consonants. This is how it's broken down into in my um, curriculum by the blocks. Like there's two blocks of consonants, then language arts, consonants, and festivals, nature stories and science, birds, language arts, vowels, math, the four processes, um, nature stories and science, animal and word families, and math, counting odd and even numbers. So basically that's the list of what you'll be covering. You know, because there's 26 letters, it takes a while to get through. So a lot of the time is spent learning letters. And normally like in other grades, you won't have such that, but it's like, oh my gosh, can we just get through these letters? But you'll have, well, I've got one, two, three, four blocks. And I did a month for a block. So that's like four months of basically learning consonants and then vowels. And then sprinkled in between are your math, quality of numbers, and the four processes. And then nature stories, word families, counting, and, um, you know, that kind of thing. So what I want to say here is that grade one is an introductory year. The concepts should be introduced gently and creatively. And something I wish I had known at the end of first grade, because I was like, oh my gosh, what if we don't get through all of it? And then we have to move into second grade. But second grade is really will revisit everything that was taught in first grade. Only it goes a lot deeper. So you're kind of like, oh. So if your child didn't fully get, they're not there to learn the four processes and have it all down in first grade. It's an introduction into the four processes and you're gonna be going through those for years. It's an introduction to reading and everything. It really is, it's just a real introduction to, to all of those um, concepts. And in second grade, there's not a whole lot that's new that's brought in, there's some different maths and obviously there's more reading and things, but it's really a um, sort of a revisiting of what was taught in first, in first grade. So I wish somebody had told me that up front because then I would be in a little bit more, um, like just not so, oh my gosh, what if we don't get to it, you know, kind of a thing. So you don't have to worry because if they don't fully get it, you'll be going back over it. And I think that would have given me a little more peace of mind. So I wanna bring that to you now so that you can relax. And if you do start halfway through the year, then you don't have to worry about, oh my gosh, they're gonna be behind if we wanna start second grade and all of that. So just observe and adjust your speed according to where they are. Don't be afraid to go slower and take extra time if they need it. You really want them to get, to get it. 
And, you know, and, and that's what Waldorf is all about, the experiences of things. And it's not just about memorizing and moving on to the next thing. All right, I'm not gonna have time to go through temperaments, but in here we cover how to teach to your child's temperament, knowing which temperament and how to bring the information um, is really, really helpful when you start to teach. And the four temperaments are the choleric, the sanguine, the phlegmatic, and the melancholic. And um, all right, let's move over to main lesson flow. The main lesson is the time when the actual curriculum material is being presented to your child. So depending on the age or grade, it can last from 20 minutes to two hours. And you know, that's just some generalizations there. In first grade main lesson, the teacher, mom or dad, will present a chalkboard drawing. So you'll have the drawing done. So like the night before, do the drawing or early in the morning. <laughs> I would do it the night before and then sort of cover it and then uncover it and then you tell the story while they're looking at, at the, the beautiful chalkboard drawing. And you tell your fairy tale and then to introduce a letter of the alphabet through the fairy tale. Then the teacher and the child draw a representation of the story. So you, could, you don't have to necessarily draw what's on the chalkboard drawing. You could take a piece of it. You don't want them to feel overwhelmed about drawing this amazing picture when they're seven. So you could pick a piece of that, and that's what I did in my curriculum, is I just took simple pictures, and it represents the letter, so the M for like a big mountain or whatever, and you're drawing the, that in the main lesson book. The next day or the third day, let me see, wait, uh, the first grade that they tell the story, then the teacher draws a reposition in their main lesson book. The next day, the story is retold back to the teacher by the child, and a sentence, summary sentence, it says paragraph, I guess it depends on your age, but for first grade, it's gonna be barely a sentence. <laughs> and the letter is added into the main lesson book. So the first day you draw the picture and the second day you do the, um, you retell and you do the, um, the sentence. Now some people do the three day where the third day you're painting from the story and going over the story again. I found that that was too redundant and long for my kids. <laughs> And so we did two day for each letter plus. I thought we would never get through the main lesson curriculum. So um, that's how it's set up in my curriculum is that you've got your two days for your each letter. So that's why it does take a long time. And if it's gonna take three days, you're gonna be doing letters for like six months. So um, we did our music, like our flute or recorder during circle time, but a lot of people will do that music practice at the end of, of your main lesson. So day one here, here's the main lesson flow. Day one is tell the story and the chalkboard art and draw the picture. Day two is paint or model from the story. And day three, retell and write the sentence. So you can use that, that's the main Waldorf lesson flow. I find it, I found it too long. But it depends. If you're working with some more math concepts down the line, then you may take the, you know, take the time to do a three day. We did a two day. But again, it's whatever works for your child. Um, okay, let's see here. I think that's got through most of what I wanted to go through. Let me come on over here and I'm sure you guys have some questions. So I'd love to I'm gonna pop over here in the chat. Does anybody have a question about their particular situation? Um, their child, what they should do and not do. Any questions about getting started with first grade? Um, curriculum questions or anything? You guys still there? <laughs> Um, there's a chat over here, so yeah, I know sometimes it takes a few minutes. So I'm just gonna put type a question into the chat. Feel free to ask. You, that's what I'm here for to kind of you know talk to you guys, um, answer questions. First grade for me was I don't know why we had already been doing Waldorf for several years, um, probably one, two, three, three to four years already. But I was very intimidated with first grade just because I thought, this is it, this is going to count, and what if I do it wrong, and what if they don't learn to read? And there can be a lot of you know, mindset issues and kind of pressure that we put on ourselves that 
I know it's easy for me to say it's all going to work out and they're all going to learn to read and everything. And, and I know it is easy to say when I've already done it. But if I can do it, anyone can do it. I wasn't anything different. I didn't know anything at this time more than you guys know. If you guys know how to read <laughs> and write and can tell a story and do some of the, you know, the arts, like really that's the most important thing is, is knowing how to bring this curriculum to your child. And through in Waldorf, it's through stories and the arts because there's no textbooks and there's no workbooks. So the teaching is done through the movement, through the painting, through the drawing, through the stories. They're learning through those. That's the, that's the vehicle that Waldorf uses to teach. So, you, you know, make sure you're understanding those concepts. You know, it's less about, oh, my gosh, what am I going to know how to teach? Do I know how to do this? I mean, if you can do simple math, that's fine. You don't have to worry about multiplication and division and harder stuff, you know, to well up into the grades. So, um, you know, the very first couple years, it's very gentle and it's really fun. And I want it to be joyful. I want you guys to have a good time. I want you to, you know, experience the festivals and the love of learning. And as they start to learn to read, you know, that connection that's made and the excitement when they can open the book and they can read. And at the end of the year, my girls always like to go back and then read their sentences because they really couldn't read them when we started and they were just sort of modeling. And then at the end, they're able to go back and now they're able to go back and kind of laugh because they sound so simple. You know, the sentences are really small and just a few words, but you know, that's the way you have to start. So, um, so yeah. Does anybody have a question? Nobody has any questions? Um, all right, well, I don't wanna keep you too long. I am going to give you the information um, about the first grade package. In fact, let me, yes, I'm just gonna pull it up and I'm gonna type it in here and I'll send this out for those who are gonna watch on the replay. Um, I just want to pull it up. So it's basically the waldorfconnection.com forward slash first grade package. And what, like I said, I literally sat down and I looked through all of my stuff and I have a lot of, a lot of stuff here that I've gained over the last eight years. And I put everything into one package to make it super affordable for anyone getting started with first grade. So what this package includes is, let me get to the list because then I'll make sure I don't have miss anything here. Well, one, it includes my first grade curriculum. And I'm sorry I don't have a hard copy of it here. I, I think I sold my last copy and haven't introduced it, but there's a picture of it on the page, you can see. Um, it's called A Holistic Journey Through Nature and Fairy Tales. It's a complete first grade Waldorf inspired curriculum with 35 weeks of lessons and stories. I really created this, and I'm, you can read all about it, so I'm not going to say everything, but I, I created this as an all-in-one. Like, there, you, unless you, you, the only things you need to go out and get are the main lesson books and the crayons and paints. But everything else you need is in the curriculum. All the stories are in there. The circle time is all done for you, and I included the songs you can listen to on MP3. Um, there's a planner in there. There are those sheets, the halfway sheets, the checkup sheets to see where you are pictures of all of the main lesson stories so you don't have to wonder what to draw. Like I took everything I wished I had in the curriculum and I also had like 10 test students when I was creating this curriculum and I changed and added as we went through it to exactly what they told me they wanted I put into it. So it was basically mom created to give you the Waldorf magic, but in an easier way to digest it. Everything's laid out for you. You don't have to wonder what to do. You don't have to make up your own lessons. If you're looking for that type of curriculum, this is not it. This is a done for you curriculum for a busy mom who has maybe three children or um, a, seven, you know, a seven year old and a toddler and can't spend hours a day creating lessons and um, you know, crafts and things. Everything's in here all the projects. I have original stories that I wrote to tie in the entire year. There are little mini stories that come before the fairy tales about a girl and a boy, a girl named Nadia and Milo. And it's very holistic stories about caring for the earth and we are all one. 
and animals and how they learn their letters and how they learn math and it's got fairies and it's just it's very magical and very gentle um, way to kind of lead through that and there's pictures of them in there so um, what else am I um, there's a there's two books that come with my curriculum one is the lesson book and it has all the lessons it also has the entire year of recorder lesson in there so you can just you know, all you have to do is buy the recorder and I have instructions on how to play and all the notes and the songs. Um, it has the separate support section that helps you with how to schedule your day, the temperaments, what is a main lesson, how do I do, you know, my rhythm. It has all festival guide in there, a whole guide to the years of festivals. It's sort of the support side, like the how-to behind the scenes. Here's your child at seven. Here's what they're experiencing. Here's what you might go through. All the prep work. There's a reading list for first grade. Tons of resources. Where to buy your stuff. Like I try to include everything. <laughs> you know, ideas for whatever. I just, I have a whole bunch of stuff over there to kind of give you the behind the scenes. And then you can just use the lesson book as you go. So that is the complete first grade. There is um, an online PDF version and there is a hard copy version. So if you buy the hard copy, you get both. That way you can you know, put it on a tablet um, and you get the MP3 songs and all of that um, online, of course. Um, and the, the planner and everything is also online because you can put the dates, your dates, and then print out. That's why I did it as a PDF in there. All right, in this package, I'm including the Waldorf Art Studio. This is a value that I'm throwing in here. It's $197, and it is 16 videos that visually show you how to do all of the Waldorf Arts. This is one of my top sellers, and it really goes hand in hand with first grade. That's why I try to include it a lot when I do special packages. It includes painting, form drawing, block crayon drawing, chalkboard drawing, playing a blowing instrument, the mood of the fifth, how to sing, <laughs> circle time, how to knit, like how to cast on, how to knit, how to use wool, how to do wool, wool felting. I actually make a little, I show you us making a project, how to tell a story, and how to do a puppet show. Like I included everything you're going to need for the first grade, and, and then and on. I mean, once you have these mastered, it's basically everything you'll need for the grades and up, with the exception of bringing crocheting in. I probably should add crocheting, but this is for the first grade. So um, it includes everything and it's all on video. So if you're like, I don't, I need to see it happen, you can stop it, rewind it. And I also have a little guide sheet with each topic that tells about Steiner's indications. Why do we do knitting in the first grade? Why do we do form drawing and all of that? So I give you a little behind the scenes and, and you know, show you how to do the form drawings and the best ways to do all that. So it's really invaluable if you're like, I've never done this type of stuff before and I'm really worried about the arts, then the Waldorf Art Studio is an amazing resource for you. You can use it between now and you know, the summer to get yourself prepared and it has everything you need to know. And I don't know a place that has all of that in one spot to give you everything. Um, I'm including the first grade boot camp, and these were the notes, some of the notes from the first grade boot camp. But what the special thing about the boot camp, I like basically outlined first grade and went a lot deeper um, than what we just did here, of course. But I, I do an actual main lesson. I stand up with the chalkboard behind me, show you the drawing, and then I tell the story. And so I, and then we draw. So I go through the whole thing so that you can see, again, what it looks like. I'm a very visual person and I really like having something I can watch and see. So that's included. Um, another tutorial that I did called Everything You Need to Know About to Teach First Grade. It's an audio and it's a PDF. Um, there's transcripts and there's lesson blocks and it's just another thing, a recording that I did that I really talks about what it's like to be doing first grade. Um, there's a handout highlight handout resources and a block rotation that talks you about how your year could look and, and plan out your blocks. So here are some extra bonuses that I kind of, like I said, I went and really dug deep and found some things. There's a first grade reading list and material list you'll get. There's a grade one readiness PDF that lists out all of the things, even more than what I said here. And there's a special letters and form drawing for first grade PDF done by Waldorf teacher Ann Cleveland that shows the types of forms and how to do them and how to do the letters, suggestions for teaching the letters. 
and then there is a first grade curriculum overview that goes into depth about the, each block and what is going to be taught in it. So I tried to give you everything I had here <laughs> about the how to's of first grade and then the actual curriculum you know, so that you can just go, okay, great. Now I know how to do it and here's what I need to do. I open the book basically and I do it. So normally my curriculum sells for $227 for the hard copy, but I'm doing the entire package for $247. So that's giving you, it's like a, I think the value, the total value was over $585 or something like that. You get the Waldorf Art Studio, all the videos. You get a hard copy of, I'm including this hard copy of the curriculum. Shipped to the US. If you are in Canada and or international, you can still get this deal, but I will have to add extra shipping because the shipping rates have just gotten um, ridiculous. So just email me and, or if you wanna just purchase, and then email me and I'll just send you whatever it costs me, I will pass on. I will not charge upcharge on shipping charges because it's just too expensive now. So you'll get the art studio, the, the first grade, complete first grade curriculum. You'll get my first grade boot camp, my teaching first grade, um, audio and PDF, and plus all of those training, extra training um, things that I kind of added, some extra PDFs in there. So um, this package is good. Oh, here it is. First grade, uh, the whole package is $575. So this package I'm doing um, just through Sunday. So um, again, I'll post over here in the chat. I'll go ahead and give you the, um, the link. So if you're like, okay, I'm ready to you know, look at getting my first grade curriculum. Um, this is an excellent package because it has everything that you need. Um, let me see, I spent the first, one. first grade package. There we go. All right, I'll put that in the chat. If anybody wants to link, you can just click the link and look and see everything that's included. I tried to give you, I tried to give you all the tools, everything that you need to make your first grade a success, so that it's fun for you, so that you're not wondering if you're doing it right, so you're not overwhelmed with some of those curriculums I've seen are come in these huge binders. It's very confusing. There's so much stuff you don't know where to dig in. This is just what you need and not anything more and not anything less. It's exactly what you need to get going for first grade. Um, bringing this in a holistic Waldorf inspired way. Um, I've included everything so that it's easy and done for you, but still brings all the magic of Waldorf to enjoy your first grade year. So if you have any questions about that, the package, you can email me at support at the Waldorf connection.com. Um, since I don't see any questions coming in, I'm going to go ahead and wrap it up. I hope this helped you get started and give you a background of what's going on for first grade. Don't be afraid. <laughs> it's really fun. And once you kind of get into the flow and do this for a few weeks, at least that's what happened to me. Then I was, I relaxed a little and I was like, this is really fun. And that's really what I want for you. You know, it's a journey for your kids, but it's also a journey for you. So as long as you're prepared and have everything that you need, it should be fun and fine. <laughs> but if you have no idea what you're doing, then that's when the stress and the overwhelm can come in and you might throw in the towel and say, this is too hard. I don't know how to do this Waldorf stuff, but it doesn't have to be. So I tried to make an affordable package that includes everything. And um, you've got time between now and you know when school gets started to really dig into this, get familiar with it, practice with the videos from the art studio read through some of the stories I have in the curriculum and everything's right there. All you need is your art supplies and your main lesson book and you're ready to go. So, um, all right, you guys, thank you for showing up for tea with Donna. And um, until next time, you guys can do this and um, I'll see you later. Bye-bye.